Today, for most Indians, the connection to Korea is defined by its most iconic companies like Samsung, Hyundai, LG Electronics, and there are quite a set of audience in India who are big fans of Korean drama and Korean pop. But India's historic ties to Korea go back more than a 2,000 years to a time when Korea was a collection of tribal city-states. Incredibly 6 million Koreans, or almost 10% of the Korean population, trace their ancestry to an Indian princess who is said to have traveled to Korea in search of her groom. The reference we get is from the Korean work, Samgakusa, written by a Buddhist monk in 13th century, in which he mentions about a 16-year-old princess, Hyo Hwang Ok, who got married at the year 48 AD to the first King Suro of Gaya and became the first queen of Gaya kingdom. Hyo was said to be the princess who came from the Ayuta kingdom. Some wrongly connect Ayuta kingdom with Ayodhya, but the ancient name of Ayodhya was Saketa at that time. And Samgak Yusa was written long back in 13th century. Therefore, it doesn't refer to Ayodhya. Ayuta Kingdom here refers to Ayi Kingdom that was a vassal to the Pandya dynasty of ancient Thamilagam. This can be substantiated with the fact that Princess Hio carried with her the symbol of twin fish and trident. In one of the ancient Tamil kingdoms, that is, the Pandya kingdom, two fishes are depicted in their flags, coins, emblem, and it had been the most meaningful symbol in their way of life. Hyo Hwang Ok is worshipped as a deity in Korea. Princess Hyo was also known by the name Sem Babalam in Tamil, which means red coral. Interestingly, the Korean name Hyo Hwang Ok also shares the same meaning. On top of that, the activities like pearl hunting and the industry for coral ornaments were familiar only in ancient Tamil Nadu at that time. The linguistic relationship between Korean and Tamil language cannot be ruled out in establishing the actual history of Korean people. There are many words found in both Korean and Tamil language which shares the same meaning and are pronounced in a similar way. Appa, Omma. In addition to this, the researchers have found 500 words which are similar in Korean and Tamil. Apart from language, they also share similar culture and habits. According to the research works by historians like Arisa Balu, Korean language and culture is intertwined with Tamil language and culture. Koreans are largely rice eaters and their paddy cultivation was said to have taught to them by Tamils. Just like Tamils, they have the habit of leaving slippers outside the house and bowing before elders as a sign of respect. Hanging out chilies in front of house to ward off the spirits. Habit of eating rice along with pickle and few similar Tamil cuisines like rice cakes, rice puffs and lentil cakes. Korean researcher Yung Nam Kim says that traditionally, the Korean people like wearing the white colored dress despite their cold weather. This custom must have been brought in by the Tamilians, who are used to wearing the white-colored dress because of the hot weather. Similar to Tamil's Pongal festival, Koreans do celebrate Harvest Festival in the name of Chusik as a thanksgiving. The old traditional thatched houses found in Korea looks very similar in style with that of the Tamils. 
Many reasons have been predicted for these similarities. It might be because of the Queen Hughes expedition. Or it might be through Buddhists or through the Cholas and Pandyas, who made an extensive trade. Besides all of these similarities, what's more interesting is the story and the ancient bond between two nations.